Hi friends, in our engineering course, we often come across terms like frequency domain and time domain. Today, I would like to share the concept uh, which I have understood and I hope you guys also get it very well. Uh, to get started, I'll start from a time domain signal. Here I have drawn a sine wave of a known period T. Okay. I hope you understand what is meant by t. t is nothing but a period and inverse of t is nothing but the frequency. So in time domain basically what you do is you plot amplitude versus time. Correct? So assume this is a 1 kilohertz signal. That means it's oscillating 1 kilohertz time. Okay? 1 kilo times every second. So that do, that's what it means by 1 kilohertz. Okay? If it's 2 kilohertz, it means I've, if I take the scale of 1 kilohertz, then it will be like I will be having 2 cycles in this interval. Correct? So in time domain, we simply plot amplitude versus time. That's it. Nothing else. But now, the problem starts when it comes to frequency domain. Many people do face problem with frequency domain. Like, they don't understand why we need frequency domain. Okay? So I'll try to highlight some of the things which I understood so in frequency domain what we do is we plot amplitude versus frequency okay so we have amplitude on y-axis and frequency on x-axis for a signal for a this signal which is of frequency 1 kilohertz if I plot it in frequency domain rather than in time domain it happens something like this see this is the frequency domain you have you have amplitude here on y-axis and at 1 kilohertz you get a peak okay and the value of this peak you can obtain by taking Fourier transform I won't go in depth of Fourier transform because it's an application and which you have to learn okay because before going to Fourier transform you have to learn what do you mean by frequency domain okay so the amplitude you can calculate by using a Fourier transform or Fourier series. I mean, it, it would depend whether the signal is periodic or non-periodic, okay? So I won't go into much of the complication. But in that's the basic crux. I mean, the, in frequency domain, you just plot amplitude versus frequency. So if I have 2 kilohertz signal in time domain, this is 2 kilohertz. So in frequency domain, you will see a peak at 2 kilohertz. Fine? okay now you may wonder why we need to go for frequency domain i mean what is the use of having these signals being plotted as amplitude versus frequency right okay suppose you design a system which gives an audio output so the audio output may be typically in the range of 3 kilohertz to at max I mean, 20 kilohertz is the audible range so if you are in that range and you have designed a system which takes some input okay some input and it gives 3 kilohertz signal let's say ideally ideally if your signal doesn't have any noise what would you see what what you will be seeing in the spectrum analyzer would be a peak at 3 kilohertz right but in nature things doesn't work that way You'll be having noise from other sources you'll be having some thermal noise there are many switching noise as well so there will be harmonics in addition to the signal of interest and if you try to to see the output which is non-ideal in an oscilloscope it may not be perfect sign it may be somehow distorted like this okay which mean what I'm trying to say is you may not be able to identify what frequency is this is corrupting the signal okay so for that reason we go for frequency domain if we apply the same signal to a spectrum analyzer so the spectrum analyzer is one which allows you to plot amplitude versus frequency if you plot it I'm taking a random example if you pass this signal to a spectrum and you may perhaps see a signal of interest that is your 3 kilohertz and apart from that you will be seeing some harmonics okay 
if you design a filter like a low pass filter band pass there are different filters to filter out the other components okay and retain only the signal of interest you can get a signal of this kind not exactly but close to of this kind but to get that information like what i am supposed to filter out you need to have a frequency spectra of it okay i think i am making some sense here okay now i'll explain one more beauty of sinusoidal signals any signal or i would say most of the signals in nature can be represented as a sum of sinusoidal signals of different frequencies what different frequency you better read fourier transform that would help you out but i'm just trying to give you an abstract view that's it okay if i want to generate a square wave which looks somewhat like this and if i tell you that it's a superposition of different sinusoidal signals it may seem a bit weird at beginning but that's the beauty of fourier transform let's see how it works you have a signal a sine wave okay first you draw a sine wave just a sine wave okay next you draw one more sine wave try to add these things you will end up in a wave with some ripples on top okay might be initially these ripples may be significant i mean you may be able to see one or two ripples add one more wave start adding i mean you have to add point by point very simple so this point correspond to this point so add start by adding every point okay if you repeat the same procedure you get something like this where ripples most of the ripples will be in this point if you repeat the same procedure for sig n number of signals let's say 10 20 30 i mean go for large numbers can you can ideally simulate this in matlab that would be a better exercise for you to do you can see at the end you will be able to see a signal which looks something like this and it has small ripples but those ripples are not uh they, they are not that significant to see so that we can see them as ripples they are very tiny ripples okay so it's a superposition of different sine waves that's what we get okay on superposition there's the beauty of fourier transform now if i now if if this is the signal in time domain let's say this is t this is amplitude if i take the fourier transform of it there's algorithm by name fast fourier transform if you use that algorithm you will see something like this there are different frequency component f1 f1 f2 f3 these are the frequencies of these sinusoidal signals which are being added okay and these are their amplitudes the reason this amplitude is decreasing if you want to find out take the fourier transform you'll you will observe that this amplitude goes on decreasing okay so a signal in time domain may look as sort of this fashion in the frequency domain but it says it's a superposition of it say it basically says that this signal is composed of these many frequencies of sinusoidal signals okay i'll give you a better view if i can show you an oscilloscope i hope you all guys know how to use an oscilloscope and here is my signal generator i have given 1 kilohertz frequency and it's a sine wave so this is my oscilloscope so this red waveform is nothing but the fourier transform okay i have turned on the math function so the operation is fft fine so this is my sinusoidal signal of 1 kilohertz and i get only one frequency component 1 kilohertz as i explained earlier okay now if i change this wave to a square wave now what should happen you should see multiple frequency components and their amplitude should be decreasing now see i have i'm changing the mode to square wave okay now we can see this is the square wave 
and its amplitude is decreasing correct so that is the importance of frequency domain it basically gives you the idea about all frequency components are contained in this square wave for the formation of this square wave what all frequencies are added what all frequencies of different signals are added to make this wave have this shape and the frequency domain gives you a good idea of what all different frequencies are present here okay i think i have tried my best to to give you some information about time domain and frequency domain thank you thanks for listening